Coming up on today's Airborne, Independence Kansas facility delivers its 10,000th single engine Cessna. Bearhawk aircraft owner receives FAA training LODA, and Disney applies for a UAV patent. Welcome to Airborne on Airway TV, I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, a bit of an interesting revelation occurred just a few hours ago with the announcement that Google, in addition to its recent purchase of the Titan Aerospace Group run by Vern Rayburn, has been in research and development of its own UAV series, Project Wing, for a couple of years. Mind you, a couple of interesting permutations to this. One, they've been doing their development in Australia. Why? Seems like a long way from California where Google headquarters is based. Well, it seems that Australia seems a bit more amenable to research and development, that the regulatory stance out there is a bit more accepting of those who are trying to define the future for these vehicles because, well, the FAA here not only doesn't know, doesn't seem to want anybody to know and has been a constant roadblock to those who are trying to establish a future for an industry that's coming whether they like it or not. The 22 pound Project Wing is a vehicle that can land and take off vertically, sustain horizontal flight, lower packages. It's meant as a small short-term delivery solution for short range. It can do a number of things. They show uh, delivering dog food in the middle of the Australian outback. There's no question that it's a development vehicle. We understand there are a number of other vehicles in the pipeline and under consideration. It's an exciting idea. And the most exciting aspect of it is, well, it's Google. Talk about the 600 pound gorilla in any neighborhood. This is something our FAA is gonna to have to sit up and take notice of or simply be steamrolled uh, by as somebody else takes some prominence. A number of our elected officials are as impatient with the FAA as we are. And as Google defines new roles for UAVs, and as Google takes more of its Project X resources or its moonshot team, the folks who are doing the really forward-looking, forward vision uh, work, and gets more and more involved in the UAV industry, everybody else is going to have to take notice and be a part of it or be left behind. Kind of like well, most of the U.S. UAV industry because of what the FAA has been doing to it. We'll have more on this very shortly. We're researching it as we speak. It's a fascinating project with Google's prominence in the industry and their investment already in things like Titan Aerospace, which is something of a, well, for lack of a better way to put it, kind of a low orbiting satellite. These are machines that can go 50, 60,000 feet in the air, be there for weeks at a time, provide cell service, broadband, all kinds of interesting services. And other projects that are rumored to be in development, well, the UAV business just got a lot more interesting, which is hard to believe because it's been pretty darn interesting up till now. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The 10,000th single engine Cessna aircraft has been delivered from Textron Aviation's Independence, Kansas facility since its first delivery in June of 1996. Liberty University took delivery of the milestone aircraft, a Cessna Skyhawk, along with two other Cessna Skyhawks, adding to its growing flight training fleet. Since its first single engine delivery in June of 1996, the Independence facility now produces the majority of Cessna single engine piston products, including the Skyhawk, Turbo Skylane JTA, Station Air TTX, as well as two Citation Jets, the Mustang and the M2. Techstarn Aviation also has its Garmin Avionics Training Center in Independence. Bearhawk builder, owner, and certified flight instructor Jared Yates of Hickory, North Carolina, has received a letter of deviation authority from the FAA, allowing him to provide commercial transition flight instruction in his four-place Bearhawk. Without the LODA, commercial training in an experimental amateur-built aircraft is not allowed. Jared Yates is the owner and builder of a four-place Bearhawk built from a kit. Yates is a career pilot with thousands of hours of flight experience in airplanes large and small. He holds CFI and Air Transport Pilot Certificates. Yates is also the editor of Bear Tracks newsletter, which he produces in conjunction with Bearhawk designer Bob Barrows. The Bearhawk, in which Yates will provide the training, features a Lycoming 0360 engine with a constant speed propeller. Yates' training program will help new Bearhawk pilots make a safe transition into the Bearhawk 
from aircraft they have previously flown. This sort of training is also highly recommended prior to flight testing of a home-built aircraft. When we come back, we'll find out what Mickey Mouse has to do with drones. You're watching Airborne. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. The FAA is still churning its way through the process of determining rules for UAVs and the national airspace system. But that hasn't slowed down some companies from making long-range plans for the aircraft popularly known as drones. And according to reports, the latest is Disney which through its subsidiary, Disney Enterprises, has filed for three UAV-related patents. The application for aerial display systems patents were published August 21st. They include marionettes carried into the air by pre-programmed UAVs and airborne projection screens to display floating images projected by what Disney calls flixels. Disney Enterprises told Reuters, that such displays could be an alternative to fireworks and light shows as are now seen in the parks. So maybe one day visitors to Disney will really believe that an elephant can fly. The Boeing company has announced an order by BOC Aviation for 50 737 MAX 8s, 30 next generation 737 800s, and two 777-300ERs. The order, which is valued at $8.8 .8 billion at list prices, is the largest in BOC Aviation's 20-year history. Robert Martin of BOC Aviation said, quote, Following the successful placement of the 50 next-generation 737 aircraft that we ordered in 2006, this is a continuation of our commitment to be responsive to airline customers which are expanding or replacing older fleets, end quote. The next generation 737-800 is the best-selling version of the highly successful next generation 737 family. AOPA's Bruce Landsberg is heading into retirement. Landsberg announced his retirement after 22 years in leadership roles at the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. AOPA President Mark Baker said, quote, We are grateful to Bruce for his years of unparalleled dedication to general aviation and we're delighted that he has agreed to continue on as our senior safety advisor. We wish Bruce all the best as he begins a new chapter of his life." End quote. As Landsberg leaves his role as president of the AOPA Foundation and executive director of the AOPA's Air Safety Institute, he will assist with the transition as AOPA welcomes Jim Minow to the head of the AOPA Foundation and George Perry to lead the Air Safety Institute. Both Minnow and Perry will begin transitioning into their new roles in September. After the break, Napa County Airport's control tower remains closed after earthquake damage. Stay tuned. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. Last Sunday's earthquake in Northern California blew most of the windows out of the control tower at Napa County Airport. 
and it's reported the FAA says it could take several weeks for repairs to be completed. Until the safety of the tower can be verified and the windows replaced, the tower will remain closed. It's reported that according to FAA spokesman Ian Greger, quote, the structure itself does not appear to be damaged, but that will be evaluated to make sure it is safe, end quote. The airport will continue to operate without the control tower using standard procedures that are used for all other non-towered airports. It's possible for the FAA to furnish a temporary portable tower operation at the airport, but whether or not that will happen has not been confirmed. A pair of Galileo navigation satellites launched last week by Ariana Space from its spaceport in French Guiana failed to reach their proper orbits prompting the formation of an investigative committee to look into the launch. The satellites were being carried by a Soyuz ST rocket. According to a statement from Ariana Space, the liftoff and first part of the mission proceeded normally, leading to the release of the satellites. It was only after the separation of the satellites that telemetry stations showed that the satellites were not in the expected orbit. According to the initial analysis, an anomaly is thought to have occurred during the flight phase involving the frigate upper stage, causing the satellites to be injected into an incorrect orbit. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember, there are some great upgrades coming to Airborne soon, so stay tuned. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.